Hi friends, today I am giving a lecture on catch memory in computer organization and architecture. It is one of the most important type of memory in computer organization and architecture. Catch memory is one type of memory in memory hierarchy. The capacity of the catch memory is very low. The access time of the catch memory is low. The accessing speed of the catch memory is high. Okay. So these are the characteristics of the catch memory. Where the catch memory is located? The catch memory is placed in between the CPU and main memory. So it is shown in this figure. Okay. Here the first block is CPU. The third block is main memory. Here the catch memory is located in between the CPU and main memory. Okay. We are already discussed in the previous video. So catch memory is the fastest memory component in memory hierarchy. Okay. So next, what is the reason behind for developing catch memory? So suppose we can take a typical program. In that typical program, there are several active portions of the code and data are there. Okay. So whatever the active portions and data are there in the typical program, that are placed in a fast and small memory so that the average access time of the program can be reduced. Thus, the execution time of the program is also reduced. So such a fast and a small memory is called as catch memory. It is located in between the CPU and main memory. So the fundamental idea of catch memory organization is the most frequently accessed instructions and data are placed in a fast and small memory is called as catch memory. So that means catch memory holds the most frequently accessed instructions and data. Okay. Next, catch memory works on a principle called principle of locality. What is the means of meaning of locality of reference. Suppose we can take a short period of interval. The addresses generated by a typical program refers to a few localized areas in memory. Okay. The addresses generated by a typical program referred to a only few localized areas in a memory. So such a concept is called as locality of reference. So 90% execution time of the program depends on only 10% of the program code. So that principle is called as 90% to 10% principle. So like a locality of reference. Now comparing the access time of catch memory and main memory. 
the catch memory access time is always less than the main memory access time. So by a factor of 5 to 10 times. Okay. So this is the description about catch memory. Next, what is hit? What is miss? What is hit ratio? That can be discussed in later. Next, the basic operation of catch memory can be described as follows. Suppose the CPU wants to access the memory for a particular word. First, if it checks the catch memory, if the word is present in the catch memory or not. If the word is present in the catch, then it can be read from the catch memory. Suppose if the word addressed by the CPU is not found in the catch, it can be read from the main memory. Okay, so this is the basic operation of catch memory. Once again, I am telling, suppose CPU wants to access a particular word from the memory. First, if it checks the catch memory, if the word is present in the catch or not. Suppose if the word is present in the catch memory, the CPU reads that word from the catch memory. Suppose if the word is not found in the catch memory, then CPU reads the word from the main memory. Okay, so this is the basic operation of the catch memory. Okay, the performance of the catch memory can be defined in terms of a quantity called hit ratio. Okay, hit ratio. By using the hit ratio, we can say that the performance of the catch memory is good or not. Okay, so what is hit ratio? Hit ratio is equal to number of hits divided by the total number of memory references. So that means number of hits plus number of misses. Okay. So this is the formula. So the performance of the catch memory can be defined in terms of a quantity called hit ratio. Hit ratio is equal to number of hits divided by number of hits plus number of misses. That means total CPU references to memory. Okay. So in this one, what is hit and what is miss? Suppose CPU wants to access a particular word. If the word is present in the catch memory, then we can say that it is said to be a hit. Okay. If the CPU wants to access a particular word, if the word is not found in the catch memory, that word is present in the main memory then it can be counted as a miss. Okay. So here, CPU wants to access a particular word. If the word is present in the catch memory, then it is said to be a hit. If the word is not present in the catch memory, then it is found in the main memory. It is said to be a miss. Okay. So, hit ratio is equal to number of hits divided by total number of memory differences. That is, number of hits plus number of misses. Okay. So, the hit, if the hit ratio is very high, what is the meaning of that one? If the hit ratio is very high, that means... The CPU wants to access the memory, wants to access the memory for a particular word. 
if the bird is always present in the catch okay so that is the meaning of hit ratio is very high so here if the hit ratio is a high then we can say that most of the time the cpu access the catch instead of main memory because cpu wants to access a particular bird most of the time if the bird is present in the catch memory instead of accessing the main memory so because of that reason hit ratio is very high okay next one the basic characteristic of catch memory is average memory access time is very low for the catch memory okay so because of that reason the execution time of the program is always reduced so that the performance of a computer is also depends on catch memory okay next the problem is catch access time is equal to 100 nanoseconds main memory access time is equal to 1000 nanoseconds find out the hit ratio okay first of all what is catch access time here catch memory is located between the cpu and main memory suppose cpu wants to access a particular word so it can access the memory okay so if the requested word first it checks the catch memory if the word is available or not suppose if the word is available then cpu reads the that word from the catch memory by accessing the catch memory so that is called as hit okay catch access time is equal to hit time okay suppose cpu wants to access a word first it checks the catch memory if the word is not present in the catch memory then it can access the main memory and reads that word from the main memory okay while traveling that word from main memory to the cpu one copy of the data is stored in the catch memory okay so then we can say that if the requested word is present in the main memory then it is called as miss so here main memory access time is equal to 1000 nanoseconds so this is a miss and this is a hit okay so according to that hit ratio is equal to hit ratio is equal to number of hits divided by number of hits plus number of misses okay so number of hits hits is nothing but catch access time that is 100 divided by number of hits that is also 100 plus number of misses misses is nothing but main memory access time that is 1000 so into 100 okay so that is equal to 100 divided by 1100 into 100 so two zeros three zeros so that is equal to so 90 percent hit ratio is equal to 90 percent okay next what is mapping so the transformation of data from main memory to catch memory is called as mapping technique here there are three types of mapping techniques are there first one is associative mapping second one is a direct mapping third one is a set associative mapping okay so in this diagram where we are using the mapping procedure okay 
Suppose CPU wants to access a particular word. Okay, first if it checks the catch memory, if the requested word is present in the catch or not. Okay, suppose if the requested word is present in the catch, it is said to be it, then CPU access that word from the catch memory. If the requested word is not present in the catch memory, then it can access the main memory. So then it is called a miss. Suppose a miss is occurred, if the requested word is present in the main memory, so when the CPU access that word, so one copy of the data is stored in the catch memory. Okay, so at that time, the transformation of data from main memory to catch memory can be done. So that process is called as mapping procedure. Okay, so there are three types of mapping procedures are there. So one is, so associative mapping. Second one is direct mapping. And third one is self-associative mapping. So in the next videos, we are discussing about each and every mapping technique. Okay.